let's get started. First things first is I have a clean Maya scene without anything to it and I'm going to import the FBX file that I got from Sketchfab. So I'm going here and I'm importing the FBX file. Now this FBX file looks nothing like what you saw in Sketchfab. At least a little bit of a mess here on the left side. So I'm going to be first renaming all of this and then we'll cut right into stylizing the scene. See you in a bit. Okay, now we've renamed the entire scene and we have all the different geometry properly named. I'm not gonna reorganize the hierarchy that came in. I'm just gonna keep it like that because that's not the purpose of this tutorial. But in case you wanted to, you can of course reorganize however you want your scene. So let's get started. Now you're gonna notice this is quite black. This is because on the original asset, there's an inflated geometry creating this outline that you see here. Now we don't need this for MNPRX, so I'm gonna disable this. We select it and as you can see, we have the building outline and I'm gonna just hide the building outline. So now we have the building, it's time to add some textures to it. So I select the main building geometry I open up the material presets and I'm gonna create a textured preset here. Let's click the here, I click on load and you're gonna see we have this loaded up here. I'm gonna select the material. By the way, what I had open back here is the hyper shade, but when you're working with a hyper shade, you won't see the attributes refresh correctly in the attribute editor. So I always recommend whenever you want to work with the attribute editor to close the hypershade window. Okay, now we're going to add an albedo texture and we have here a texture called Atlas. Now this asset was prepared for game engines which are very concerned about the memory footprint and that's why they cram a bunch of different textures that would otherwise be separate into one called Atlas that contains all of these in a bigger texture. So we're gonna load up the atlas and you still can't see anything because here the textured viewport is not enabled. So once we enable this, we will have already some textures assigned to the object. However, as you can see, there's others like some parts of the object that don't have any texture. And this is because of how this asset was created. Now, if I select the materials, and I visualize them in the hypershade, you can see that many materials have been selected. So many materials are actually assigned to this object, which is not really something that we encourage using MNPRX, simply because it's much easier to associate a material to an object instead to individual elements, especially once you start doing more complex things. So for this case, we're gonna stick to this but just remember, in case you want things like the import-export of MNPRX styles to work, try to keep it one object per material for this. All right, let's get to it. So we're gonna see here, let's see what objects this material has. And as you can see, we have some air conditioning, some boxes, some trees actually also there. So let me disable this and I'm gonna be adding these to this SFX material that we just originally created and I'm gonna do the same thing with the others so we have some materials here but these are these are a little bit different because so as you can see we have them here if you look at the original asset these parts were done for this kind of uh, decals that you see here. So this is a different type of material. It's not the main building material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new material that is going to be textured as well. So I double click here. It's gonna be props SFX. By the way, SFX stands for Shader FX, which is the plugin that we use to create the MNPRX materials. So and this one here is going to have a props texture. Once I load that in, you can start seeing some props here. However, 
we also need to add a transparency to it basically so we enable here transparent in the material settings and this will show us a transparency section in which we can pick an alpha mask and we enable that so now we can see these decals now as you can see this is very sharp this is because transparency is either fully transparent or fully opaque in case you want semi-transparency you would need to add that into the material so here in the settings you can add semi-transparency and then you could add a transparency map instead of an alpha mask just gonna choose the same one and then you would have something uh, closer to what we had previously but just for now I'm just gonna stick to alpha mask and I'm gonna disable semi-transparency okay so let's take a look at the other materials what objects are assigned to this material we see some some stuff here these are all actually also props this is not the main building and uh, so I assign this material to selection and you can see start seeing that we're getting the right texture for these objects gonna do the same thing here mm, I can't see it just gonna isolate select it oh this is just these two little things here mm, might be a prop but let's see this is oh yes this is actually nice this is now that I see this is smoke like a little smoke animation in there so that's cool let's check what else we have here oh, okay so this is part of the main building so I'm gonna assign this material to it and you can see now we have that let's toggle this off let's see what objects are on this material just ah, these are all the different windows and the windows if I'm not wrong is part of the props so how I know this is because I've stylized this already and I've seen a little bit what these different textures contain from this asset so that allows me to quickly make a decision okay we need this or we need that in case you were wondering so now that we have this let me check okay these are trees trees are props so I'm gonna assign the material to selection as you can see we start having the nice leaves appear here I'm gonna select this one now select objects with material uh, it's the ones here which I think they're also props yes these are the these antennas and stuff like that so we're making sure that we leave no objects without uh, shader effects material so that we can stylize them later on let's select this these are uh, windows I think yes these are windows but as you can see these windows are fully transparent so this would be like a new material as well so I'm gonna create a rather a default material and I'm gonna call this yes just create a new material with the selected ones and this is gonna be glass transparent SFX that works for me but we need to enable the transparency on them it's gonna be semi-transparent and this is gonna be first of all not this color tint and transparency So if I put one here it's gonna be fully transparent and we're gonna leave it like this for now 
so let's see this oh okay so this has just selected part of the tram as you can see the front part of the windows of the tram which we can also add into this material here so now we have the interiors the interiors is a texture on its own as you can see here so we can also assign this so what we're gonna do is same thing select objects with the material and then we are going to create a new material a textured material this time and the interiors shader effects needs a texture to work with which already has it it's perfect so the interiors should be shown there which is nice and let's continue what about this one this one seems to be from the main shader let's select the objects this material not sure ah okay this is the normal material so we've already converted this normal material into the shader effects material so there's nothing to do here the outline material we're not really using this paint mat let's check this one out yes there's a bunch of billboards and things like that it might be the main the normal one yes and Shader glow standard surface. Okay, I think that's it. So to verify quickly verify this, I just select the building, select matte, and only the shader effects materials have been selected, which is perfect. So this concludes. No, there's still the tram. Let's not forget about that. This is part of the normal shader effects. Just check the wheels. All right. And this concludes the whole set preparation. Now we can continue into stylizing. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to follow us, please click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified about future videos, tips and tricks, and everything about MNPRX and achieving non photorealistic graphics. If you love what we do, please consider supporting us on Patreon. It would be awesome to see you there and it would mean a lot for us to continue developing this with your support. That's it. See you next time.